Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another chapter of Experiencer Interviews. And today we have someone who doesn't need much of an introduction. He is originally from Provence, France, but is now residing in the U.S. His name is Dr. Louis Thury. Like the great prophet Nostradamus, Dr. Thury was born and raised in Provence, France. World-famous UFO contactee, cancer survivor, and clinical hypnotherapist, Dr. Thury is a captivating speaker, author of many books, and his profound cosmic wisdom continues to astonish skeptics and believers alike. He has been a regular guest on the George Nori Coast to Coast AM popular program. He also appeared on William Shatner's Weird or What TV show, the History Channel, the BBC in London, and on countless other and televised programs worldwide. Dr. Turing graduated from the Royal School of Music in London and was recognized in the 2003 Marquee Who's Who in America. Dr. Turing has counseled people from all walks of life, including many celebrities such as Ivana Trump, Peter Fonda, Gary Busey, Dennis Haysbert, John Gray, and David Icke, to name a few. He channels his inner E.T. Draco and speaks of his five incredible UFO encounters of the fifth kind experiences all over the world. Dr. Turi teaches the mighty secrets of the superconsciousness in time and space and its interaction with the cosmic core. Uh, those, those five UFO close encounters of the fifth kind left him with a powerful drive to rekindle Nostradamus's astrological and healing work and an incredible ability to read people and predict future events. He has had quite a few ex more experiences as well. So, Dr. Turi, thank you so much for coming on. Well, again, one well, thank you so very much, Mr. Gray, for having me in your show and being a platform to pass on my cosmic wisdom to your audience. Thank you. Now we've uh, you've told uh, uh, there's a recent new like new recent news that's been coming up that you've been uh, sharing recently, and it's uh, about a, a a new prediction. Could you get into that? Oh yeah, yeah, Ian, Ian. I mean, you're talking about. <sighs> There is no no words to tell you the damage uh, of uh, uh, this hurricane, and I predict it before it formed in the Atlantic Ocean. In fact, um, like Notre Dame used to do, I write quatrain and I make very specific keywords. Okay, and uh, that was uh, in August, uh, early August. I wrote all my vision and I said, be ready for September 28. I made a video and I constantly, constantly, literally bombarded all my connections, the internet, Facebook, with this date saying to them, be careful. This is going to be a bad one. You have been warned. A lot of people will die. It's a beginning, ending. It's nasty. And... I hit it dead on, on the 28th. That's when uh, Jan touched down at 3.15 in the afternoon in uh, uh, Florida. I also predicted on coast to coast um, Katrina. <laughs> and Joel was saying to me, so anything, Louis? I said, yeah, in about a week, week and a half from now, millions of people will be forced to relocate. Uh, and then since life is a constant process of changes as well, this is Katrina. Next, Katrina was Jan. Hit it dead on. Also, in this show, I predicted that uh, a lot of fire will take place and kill a lot of animals. And again, a week later, um, fire transpired. Millions of animals died in Australia. So, um, you know, my record of prediction, including 9-11, is pretty mind-boggling if you, you know, take the time to investigate to the point where, of course, the FBI came and visited me when I predicted uh, the terrorist attack, both in Paris and New York. So that was kind of uh, interesting. <laughs> so I'm being very cautious. So um, what really um, upsets me, to tell you the, the truth, my dilemma is uh, you have uh, a NASA Corporation, uh, NOAA, USGS, National Weather Service, National Weather Service, spending billions and billions of dollars. Um, and it's like, you know, every major earthquake, anything that is above 6.0, I give the exact date and it's there. You cannot deny it yet. They will not 
the scientific community has a problem with me. They will not endorse my work, look at my work, or you know, uh, help me to help them. I mean, it's like what Einstein says: that it's the, the comble de la stupidity yeah. <laughs> is to always do the same thing and expect different results. So I have a very unarguable, proven, printed, dated, published record of predictions of large earthquakes including Jan and Katrina and so forth. Why don't they look into my work and start to get out of the box a little bit? Yeah. And that's when I'm having a little problem, Mr. Gray. Luckily for me, not everybody is an educated idiot, as I call them. Yeah. And uh, um, my following audience over the world is definitely realizing that my UFO predictive uh, legacy is definitely undeniable, especially with the latest with Ian. So instead of wasting, uh, what, 300 million to uh, try to, to blow up a little satellite on satellite on a meteorite, imagine if I had this money, what I could do for the children of the future, what I could do for science, what I could do for the police, God knows what. Yet, this is God's order for me to go through hell. <laughs> mm. Not to get those guys who could help me uh, that are in a position to reach the media. That, that includes, sad enough, George Norrie and uh, uh, Tom Deinheiser, who actually fired me for being very precise, for saying to them, Trump won't be elected and COVID will kill millions. And after that, they just fired me. And I was right all along. I was right. They just fire me from, uh, I mean, and I understand their dilemma. I mean, it's a, it's a conservative radio station and uh, they do not like people like me because they think uh, listening to me uh, is evil. They're going to go to hell. I mean, there's a bunch of young souls who haven't yet grown out of the fear of, of indoctrination. Yeah. Thank you for letting me but <laughs> venting here, Mr. Gray. Oh, thank you. All right, but yeah, if if you're if you're if it's the truth, you shouldn't be afraid of it. Just accept it and work with it, and uh, we could have saved lives, really. Well, the idea is um, is a lot of people do things whenever they feel like they do not know nothing about God cosmic design, the cosmic code rules. They do not know. They get married, they travel, they go on holiday in uh, Florida when they feel like it doesn't work that way. You know, you have a red light in the street. You have been trained when you see that red light to stop or a stop sign. Okay. Okay. This is the law, the physical laws written by men, but because you, do not see the other side of my hand, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yeah. There is another set of laws written in light by God himself. And then I can read the aeroglyph of the universe and I, I can't warn all these people. I said, you know, when doing my windows, SOS to the world, deadly window, life does not stop. You still do what the hell you have to do, excuse my French, but be extremely cautious. And if you can, and you want to plan a trip to Florida, Try not to do it during my SOS to the World Deadly Window because you might encounter another Ian or be stuck in the middle of a bad earthquake. That's all I'm trying to do. Life does not stop. You have to be warned. Everybody understands the laws of men, but they do have a bit of a problem to relate to the laws of the divine. And when it comes to the scientific community, of course, they can only perceive the reality through their five limited human senses. So only at the end of the day knows what they see, what they understand, what they see is real. Anything else is astrology, sort of science. Are you crazy? Mm. <laughs> That's what I'm dealing with. Yeah. But you know what? Not, not all people who knows Dr. Cherry are, you know, skeptics or educated idiots or, you know, morons. They, they are a lot of smart people. That's why my numbers are growing on my uh, YouTube YouTube uh, channel and my newsletter is being read all over the place. Sure. And a lot of people are saying, well, Dr. Chibi, you got it right. You got it right. Yeah, I got it right. The point is a fraction of the world, okay, yeah. knows about what I can do. That gift is to me is wasted. Okay. Because I, if I could reach millions and millions and millions of people, they will realize after a certain time, my gosh, there is definitely something involving God cosmic design. You know what? Maybe astrology is not the pseudoscience, knowing, of course, 
all the erudite men in the world who made history use astrology, including rational people like JP Morgan, who said, you know what, millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. And that is, again, something that slowly, surely, the universe and the new age of Aquarius is promoting. And you're one of those. You're one of the guys that I have to deal with. Okay, God, thanks for that. They are people who have access to help my voice to go along because I'm so special, so futuristic, so out of the the realm of reality to some people that are very religious and indoctrinated that they have big fear, okay? But there is nothing to fear about the divine, nothing to fear about God, cosmic design, or Jesus, cosmic ministry, which is astrology. Wow. Well, there's a lot of ego in the uh, the world of science. So, you know, the more there, you, you seem to be educated, the more you seem to be indoctrinated to a certain extent. Well, that's what I call the uh, spiritual pride. My gosh, this guy... How the hell is not is not educated? It is not a geologist. How the hell does he find out every single earthquake at or above six point? Or in fact, you know what I did that is something unbelievable. Many years ago, I wrote to USGS uh, Seismology Institute in Pasadena. Okay, during those days. The, the internet was just started, okay, around in 2005, I think, 1995, 1995. And I told them, okay, on that date, October the 6th and October the 9th, expect an earthquake well above 6.0. Now, guess what? On October the 6th, a 7.2 hit, and October the 9th, a 8.1 hit. And all, it's on my website. You have the date, you have my email. Would they ever bother to answer me? Of course not, because they are fearing the ridicule. They are putting their spiritual pride, their spiritual educated side. Oh, my God. No, I'm a scientist. I don't deal with that woo-woo stuff. It's not woo-woo. It's mathematics. Because it's repetitive, it can be scientifically investigated and proven. My record of prediction especially my impeccable timing is undeniable. Sad enough, it'll be for the people, for the children of the future, when I'm you're going to end up six feet under. <laughs> well, when you look at, there's a, I've had friends that have worked with police officers to locate missing children, which they did, which is, yeah, again, a, a gift similar to yours. So you know, it does help in the long run. If there is a, a, an area of the human experience that would drastically benefit from my work is the police force. Because each time I point out a SOS to the world deadly window, it is ruled and controlled by Pluto or the sign of Scorpio, which controls the police, the FBI, the CIA, sex, life, death, drama, Russia. And um, these people, I got so many emails from family members from the police. Oh, my gosh, Dr. Cherry. But they've been following me. You know, when you had this guy who put his uh, knees on top of uh, this uh, poor black dude and killed him, okay, uh, George Floyd, okay, I put a very specific quatrain again. I said, be careful. The police going to get killed or kill people. Okay, dramatic news from the police. Okay, uh, now about a year and a half, two years, I mean, to do, actually to check this, you would have to go and be patient and check the many, many YouTube videos that I have. But I kept saying to all my people that are listening to me, I worry about Russia. I worry about Putin. Ah, in January, I don't know, but the tail of the dragon is in Scorpio. Russia is controlled by the sign of Scorpio, which is death, drama, KGB, everything under the table, not justice, and they are criminal born. 99% of the people rotting in jail have a very strong negative Scorpio. Okay, so the next thing you know, I come January. And there goes Putin invading Ukraine. Again, it's there. But it's there for the people who have heard me and followed me. The rest of the world does not know that I fully and entirely predicted the invasion of Ukraine. Wow. But again, and it is not a okay, oh, I'm looking. Yeah, Dr. Cherry, you're the best. Yeah, that, that's not my motivation. Now, at 73, my gosh, <laughs> I'm done with that. Okay. 
all I'm trying to do is to make people realize that all the erudite men of the past who have made a history, all of them were into astrology. But again, in the name of science, the scientific matrix, or in the name of the religious matrix, which is very deceiving, okay, the Vatican, the, this reality, this essence of what it means to be human, the connection that the human spirit has with the universe is just being ridiculed. And in the process, my gosh, slowly but surely, we are making morons, educated idiots who cannot see past the end of their nose. So my mission, again, is to bring back, or at least keep that wisdom alive. And, and it, it will never die because people like you are intuitive. They, you have your stars already looking to your stars intuitive, psychic, spiritual, artistic. I know your past life raised you. Uh, in all that, you, 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 the stars don't lie. It's all written in light. When I deal with somebody, let's take, for example, uh, Trump, okay, um, the former president, people have to realize I'm, a, I'm an astrologer. <laughs> I am not a politician. I'm not on the left. I'm not on the right. I am not the conservative or progressive or Democrat. I'm an astrologer, <laughs> right? So when I expose his character, okay, he's a Gemini. Okay, Gemini is called in Greek mythology, the Lord of the Thieves. Two phases, two, four, six for them forever. It's just the way they are. That's why he's trying to be a president again for the second time. And he's been in pinch twice. And he talks too much. I have the very strong Gemini like he has, but I'm the positive Gemini. The positive Gemini is the messengers of the God. Obviously, you still also have the strong uh, Gemini in your chart. Okay, If not, you wouldn't be in front of a microphone. In fact, uh, Art Bell, George, Nori, both were born in June. They're Gemini. <laughs> not to forget some of the many guys that I was on the radio with who have a strong Gemini. So all I'm trying to tell you, it's it's such it's like having the world on top of my shoulder that I have to carry, but this world is loaded with idiots. Okay. And the an extreme minority, that would be the people that are listening to your show, that are listening to me, trust me, were born with an advanced UCI unique celestial identity or an astrological chart, which is perceptive, intuitive, psychic, spiritual. And then these are the people that vibrate in our cosmic speed. And these are the people that are going to listen to you, me, and learn. And that's the beauty of communicating. Gemini. And uh, to, to get back to the, the the reading you did to be prior to the recording, you were dead on from my Thank past you. up to even... Uh, health ailments trust me my mind was blown my jaw dropped and uh i'm really glad you told me what you did thank, so, you. thank you thank you i can only appreciate i'm getting so much feedback so much endorsement from people who are facing me on zoom um i am not there to tell them you know i'm the guru you follow me i am right now it's just the opposite i'm making them aware of who they are I mean, remember you have a good and bad up and down black and white god devil yin yang positive negative good it is bad it is all right without opposite there will be no life so all i'm trying to do is to make the client who faces me on zoom okay um aware of all the good and all the bad and that's why i cannot spare the person i mean you know i even me yeah i mean give me a few beer you see how positive and good i am <laughs> what i'm trying to say is the good and the bad is what makes you so the path of god in you is much stronger than the stars and the dragon, including the negative extraterrestrials, the reptilians, okay? But if you do not know about your cosmic makeup, if you do not know about the ETs, the good and the bad, you are nothing else but a robot of your stars, which are being manipulated by those entities. So uh, cosmic consciousness, 99.9999% of the people walking Earth are not cosmic conscious. The people that are running the show, that politicians, top top brain that you have out there, are not cosmic conscious. That's why extraterrestrials will never, ever talk to the president or to the top of the scientific community because extraterrestrials are master of matter. In other words, it's like they would discuss... Um, 
a computer with a mosquito. <laughs> not the brain, that's not the understanding. But meantime, they seem to be much more attracted to people like you and me. Mm. Why? Because along the way, they have lost something. Let me, how can I explain that? Let's say, for example, as of today, okay, anything to do with the spirit, creativity, religions, psychic energy, all, all this is classified by those who run the show, the government, okay, are being ridiculous, no good. So they're going to start to exterminate all that are spiritual, all that are religious, all that are intuitive, and then that rational, practical, down-to-earth the energy is going to grow. And that's why I created the extraterrestrials. They are machines of intelligence, self-reproducting in time and space, okay? They have the answers on the physical plane of every single supreme atom. They got lost into the detail, but they have lost the cosmic consciousness and the connection with God and the divine. That's why they knock at my door. That's why I'm, I'm attracting extraterrestrials like bees on honors. The more spiritual you are, the more spiritual psychic energy you were born with, okay? Because a magnet will attract a piece of wood. The more you are going to attract the extraterrestrials. Now you have the good ETs, okay? That's the Draconis from the constellation of Draco. I call them angel of light, okay? They feed us with the sun, light, life force. Number one, the sun, Leo, gold, love, light. Uh, they stimulate the mind of... Uh, Myself, for example, when I'm at my piano and I want to create a nice music, oh, wow, beautiful, or a painting, or somebody that creates technology to fix your eyes, your heart, your brain, you know, technology, yeah. And then you have the reptilians. Why don't we make some nasty virus that will kill millions? Why don't we make some nukes even more destructive than the have we have now? You see, the reptilians and the draconis are interacting with your brain. A lot of people are looking for extraterrestrials. Well, they're already part of your own makeup. They have the reptilian mind. You heard of that? The reptilian mind. And then you have the draconis mind. One is creative, okay, spiritual. That's the draconis, beautiful, artistic, emotional. And then you have the rational, practical, down-to-earth, negative <laughs> uh, dracon uh, reptilians. So you got to see um, that you're already being bombarded left and right by um, the good and the bad. You know, indoctrinated religious poison people, we call that the devil or Satan, but it's the same thing. It's the reptilians, the reptiles, okay? While the draconis is very different, different situation. Now, do not, it's important not to mingle the draconis with the draconis. Conians. The Draconians are part of the negative group of extraterrestrials, which is in reference to the reptilians, bad. Okay. The Draconians are light. They get that energy from the sun and they give you light. The reptilians have hijacked the farthest, the smallest, but the most powerful planet you can get in our solar system, which is Pluto. Pluto is Scorpio, life, death, drama. Murder, undercover, the nasty energy of the poison of the scorpion, which is all about death and rebirthing. In fact, right now, since January, the world is under the jurisdiction of Pluto and Scorpio. Right now, it's been since January. That's why you have so many people committing suicide, so many cops being killed or killing innocent people, so many secrets coming to the surface. And you can see the political front, okay? Those who run the show, okay? Who have our faith in, our, in their hands. Those people look the way they treat themselves. They lie, they cheat. They have no respect for anything or anybody but power and money. Okay, so that is the negative energy of Scorpio running this world. That's why there is so much murder, so much dramatic, deadly, natural disaster, which is also in reference to the weather, of course. <laughs> Everything is changing. We have messed up the ozone layer, so we are paying the price. Uh, all these people don't care. All they want is more money and more power. So let's let's put more um, nasty 
fumes into the uh, into the air. Let's suffocate. We don't care. Oh, no, no, we want to make money. We want to make money. Let's do not care about tomorrow or the children of the future. That is the reptilians. It's all about themselves. Greed, power, regardless of what they have to say or do, regardless of what America represents on the political front, okay, they do not care. All they want is lie, cheat, stab each other so they can maintain, gain power, and make money. That's what you are in a world. That's why when Christian says to me, if you listen to Dr. Turi, you're going to go to hell. But guess what? You're already on hell in your fear, in your stupidity, okay? And all I'm trying to do is to bring people out of that box and start to remember and never forget, most importantly, that the future is nothing else than the reincarnation of the thought. Okay, I got a quick question for you. Well, let's, sure. well, let's use this. What was this 200 years ago? You know what that is. It's a mouse, okay? It's a mouse. Yeah. What was this mouse two, 200 years ago? Well, it did exist, but yeah. It did not exist. It wasn't there. Computer that you're looking at wasn't there. The car you drive wasn't there. The city you were born, okay, a few thousand years ago. There was no Europe. There was no Africa. There was no Asia. Okay? There was no big cities. There was nothing yet. It's here. Why? Because we have been made an image of God. We have inherited the power of God. Okay? That's why. There's no difference between two images. You made an image of God. That means you have the power to create you. Men and women on this dense physical world are God and goddesses in training to learn and realize that the future is nothing else than the reincarnation of the thought. So if you're positive and you understand God cosmic design and you have a good heart and you work with the draconis, you can avoid the worst of the worst of the worst that's coming, which I don't want to see. That's why I'm warning people. We are not doomed. God did not put us on earth to die suffocating him. No. When you have lunatic on coast to coast, for example, okay, I'm not saying names, but they pretend to be either astrologers or prophets because they look like Nostradamus, okay, and telling you we're all going to die. Oh, we're not going to have any good things uh, coming to us. That is, first of all, scaring millions of people that are listening to George's show. That's the last thing to do, okay? And manipulating the superconscious in time and space to make sure this infected wannabe prophet is actually making his own reality because he's a religious fanatic who read the Bible too many times and the Bible says we're all going to die. The wrath of God. You want to get away from that. That's not God. That's not light. That's not the future. You and me and all the people listening to us now have to work against the reptilians, against negativity, because the reptilians, they will use a lot, a lot of their goodies, drugs, alcohol, pot, name it, legal or illegal. They want to hijack your body, your mind, and your soul. They want to make you depressed. They don't want you to have faith for the future. They don't want you to have any hopes. They want you to get high. And the next thing you know, you got so out of order. Okay. You're totally infected. And what you do, well, you kill yourself. That's why they will never, ever stop the incredible chain of suicide, which is plaguing the young generation. And of course, they will never stop also the school shootings. Another thing which is important. I'm shallowing all this information, by the way. Yeah. Um, you have only a few years to get a child to assimilate 2,000 years of human evolution, okay? If you have a child, you're going to sign him to school. He's going to learn algebra. He's going to learn science. He's going to learn geography. He's going to learn languages. He's going to learn the arts. He's got a hell of a lot of stuff to learn in a very short time. Problem is... Who is there to teach those kids their connection with God, Jesus' cosmic ministry, the understanding of the cosmic code that would help those kids to get the answers they are looking for 
So they Google or they get caught into one of this religion. And there is 875 different religions. Or they can land on cults like the witness of Jehovah or the Mormons or God knows what. These are cults. Okay. And then this is why you will you probably have noticed. Okay. Every single sh school shooting took place in the college, in a school, or a university. Okay. And the next thing you know, you wonder why. Because at the subconscious level, those kids are desperately looking for this food, the spiritual food, to make them understand who they are, where they come from, where they're going, as ex as exposed and in imposed by God through the cosmic design. Okay, they don't know that, so they join different various groups. And at the end, they kill themselves and they kill everybody because there is something extraordinarily important that is missing on the curriculum VT. That's why kids choose the school to tell their parents something is missing there. I'm going to kill everybody. I'm going to kill myself. And unless you bring these spiritual values outside of religion, okay, you could still involve science. Okay, Science is beautiful. I mean, I am a lover of science. Okay. However, when they start to tell you we're going to send a man to Mars, that's it. You could see the extraordinary deception that the scientific community has. We already are on Mars it, with technology. We can go anywhere with technology. But unless we reconnect with our space brother, no human body can take the millions and millions and millions of miles one way. They know it. But, you know, those educated guys, you know, they have to deceive you, like the Vatican, like the church. They they have bills to pay. They have, you know, kids to sign to college. They have their mortgage, food, gas. <laughs> it's a business. It's a corporation. It's a business. And, then, you know, they don't care. They do not care about the truth. And then the result is all these kids are killing themselves and killing others at the same time. Yeah, and it is sad, yeah. Well, ignorance and fear. Now, yeah, you know, when it comes to school, it's all about they don't teach you how to think, but what to think, what to feel. Well, again, they kicked me out of school. I was what, yeah, 13, 14, because I was ADHD. Yeah. And the, the, the teacher says, you know what, uh, Mrs. Jury, my mom, your son is amusing the class. He doesn't listen. Uh, this idiot does, did not know that God made me with a tremendous amount of mental and physical energy because I'm not supposed to stay there and regurgitate your books or your religion. I'm not supposed to do that. That was not designed to do that. I'm designed to rewrite the books and expose the truth. Okay, so what he says to my mom, okay, we need to fix him. And during those days in 1964, uh, I was 14, 63, um, the only thing they had to fix kids, we didn't have Ritalin, we didn't have all these drugs. We only had electric shocks. And my mom says, no way, no way. You ain't going to fry my son's brain. I'm going to let him run around the walls, but you're not going to turn him into a zombie. And because of this, they fired me. I was 14 years old. They said I would never speak English, I would never do anything, and I am who is who in America, and I'm teaching my wall is loaded with endorsement from the letters, cancer research, surgery, surgeon, doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists, and here I am. I am their teacher. Hello, big, big difference between education, intelligence, and a gift. All right. And then those who are into the box, they think they gotta have a tremendous amount of PhDs. Now, it's not going to give you the keys to what it means to be human, or it does not mean you're going to be happy because you're going to make tons and tons of money, okay? The people that die is the first are those who make tons and tons of money. Have you noticed that? All the riches and famous, their life means nothing. They're spending their life making you laugh, and next thing you know, you find them hanging up. They're dead, okay? Yeah. It's just so incredible what we have lost. We are constantly and slowly but surely building uh, a, a a generation of educated idiots and morons. And that is terrible just because they do not want to, those who have the power, okay, 
they do not want to stay away from their churches or their mental process is so logical and rational that they are born themselves not only skeptic but atheist okay there he goes an extreme okay religious fanatic religiously poisoned okay and then you have the down to earth practical spiritual pride educated idiots and then we have us yeah, right in the middle <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like when you're supremely wealthy, you can afford a bunch of attorneys, so you don't pay taxes. Or you're very poor, the government help you. But when you're in the middle, you gotta pay a ton of taxes. <laughs> True. <laughs> That's how it is. Uh, now you, you talked briefly about your time in uh, in, in Provence. Um, I, I haven't had the pleasure to visit there, but what happened to you as a kid? How was your life growing up there? Well. <sighs> If I recall very well, I was living in my grandpa's house. The only house that stand up in the village because all the other houses were bombarded down by the German. So we had no current water. We had no restrooms. We had space like this in the walls, loaded with rats, tons of cats. Okay, the, And then I was growing up uh, fishing. My favorite pastime was using slingshot and killing rats that were bigger than Yes, <laughs> that was my favorite pastime, <laughs> digging into the trash because, uh, you know, we were uh, seven kids. My dad died when I was very young, 11 years old. So I had to look after myself. So my mom could not control me. Nobody could control me. I was supposed to be back the cherry, a weirdo, okay? Uh, being touched by the divine or extraordinary experience that made me who I am, as I said. But my upbringing was all about freedom, and happiness and then i used to go my mom we didn't have any cell phone my mom says if you're not at home at seven o'clock there'll be no dinner <laughs> believe me i was at home at seven o'clock at night and i was gone all day she had no clue where i was i was in the middle of the uh, river that was getting out of a of his bed i was swimming in the dirt <laughs> I was I was killing birds and then I was cooking them right there and eating them. I was so hungry. That is incredible type of, of upbringing. And nowadays, what you have is kids stuck in their cell phone. They do not know the sound of the wind, the cold of the snow, the beauty of the sun burning your, yourself, fishing, hunting, going around, having fun, uh, exploring all the uh, Roman places that I used to, or the... Um, um, all the, the stuff that was left by the Germans. There is so many, many things. In my book, Beyond the Secrets, oh my gosh. Okay, this book tells you exactly what I went through. And I'm telling you, I'm not telling you everything in this book because you would not believe it to start with. That's, that's too much. You're not going to believe it. Okay, so if you don't believe in UFO, imagine what I went through and I don't tell you. Okay, but that book would tell you from A to Z, what happened to me since I was born from hell to heaven, literally. That should have been the title, from hell to heaven. But I decided to go for um, Beyond the Secret because uh, um, a lot of people do not know the power of the superconscious and how your thoughts are healing you. You could, you could affect the atomic structure with your negative thought. You can get cancer. In fact, I had cancer. And I teach and I lecture on cancer. How can I talk about cancer if I never had it? I know what it feels like. I know I gave up. I know I actually uh, recognize my mortality. But there is one thing in me that says, no, 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 I'm not going to die. Okay. And then so I developed my universal blood transfusion. And cancer is gone. And I'm 73 years old. The ETs have completely and entirely restructured myself. I look younger now than when I was 40 years old. It's crazy. But how are you going to believe that? So my book, Beyond the Secret, if you want to know where I came from, and if you want to get a lot of information and a lot of tips on the superconscious, get that book. Definitely. Cool. I'll link it below and uh, so people can uh, access it. Um, so the uh, you've had a, um, a great visit here at the age of six. That's correct. Um, again, um, I was very cold when I was a kid. We didn't have no electricity. So my mom says, uh, of course, I was punished because I was always ADD. You could not control me. Okay. So the worst thing they could do to me is split me from my brothers and sisters. Okay. Because I don't like to be left alone. But okay. So you go into the attic. They lock the door behind me. Okay. And my mom saying, I make sure to blow up your candle 
So I don't put fire in the house, whatever. And I was sleeping on the mattress on the floor. And again, um, I was hoping, hoping that to get a cat before coming up, but there was no cat. And there was more cat than rats or vice versa in, in that place. There was a butcher next door he used to catch all the animals and the blood was running from top of the house that attracted all the rats. And of course, all the, the cats of the village was there. So I had sometimes two or three cats sleeping with me because it kept me warm. That night, no cat. So in the middle of the night, I felt something on my foot and I thought he was a cat. I said, okay, I'm going to bring him in. I don't care if he has a rat. Many times I woke up with a dead rat after eating next to me. Okay, That's to tell you where I came from. So, um, and I felt something touching my feet. And I said, well, God, thank you. I thought it was a cat. I push it, I push it. Come on, come on, come on. And I called him. Come on. <laughs> didn't move. So I said, okay, I'm going to go and get him. I didn't want to move because I didn't want to lose the warmth that I accumulated in my little black kit. And then when I sat, oh my gosh, believe me, I got hot real fast. I saw at the end of my bed, the bottom of my bed, three. What I didn't know about ETs, in my mind, there were little monkeys with big eyes. That's all I had. Okay. We didn't have radio. We have nobody talking about UFO ETs. I had just logic for for a 14 year old okay um, for a six year old i was six years old and uh, or seven um when i saw that ah, the hell is that my immediate reaction is go back under <laughs> the blanket and hide okay then i was really hot <laughs> and then i get a little bit more courageous and i lift up the blanket and i wanted to see if what was going on? And one of them came from the back, from the bottom of the bed. Next to me, it was like two inches from my face. I freaked out. I was petrified. I probably passed out. The next thing in the morning, I was screaming my head off and tell my mother, the little monkey with big eyes, mama, this girl me. So my mom said, oh, good, good. You're lying. You don't want to be here. You want to be with your brothers and sisters. Now you're lying. So you're going back. Uh, and then it was the same every night for so many times. Each time I was punished, I used to see those guys. But the good news is that I knew, regardless of what was going on, that I was going to be okay the next day. So I said, they're not going to kill me. They're not going to hit me. I'll be just fine when I fall asleep. That was my first initial UFOs experience. And um, not exactly something thing that I would recommend for any kids. However, in the, in, in, in those days, in 1963, um, 66, 50, 56, you know, so many years behind me, I got to remember. Okay, in 1956, uh, uh, I heard later on that there was a lot of reports also in Russia with kids uh, dedicating with what they call little monkey, with big eyes. So I was not the first one who saw uh, the greys, but they, they were the greys, and the greys are dignified robots doing their part. Sometimes they do the abduction, sometimes they cut the cow to find out the, what's going on with the food chain. They're doing their parts, they're just the workers. So that is how I was introduced to the world of UFOs, pretty dramatically. Do you recall if they were naked or if they were wearing anything? No, to me, to me, well, you remember there was no light. I th no electricity. The only source of light was coming from the street. The window was broken, so the window, it was cold, it was frozen. We couldn't have the money to fix anything. No water, no restroom, no heat. <laughs> okay. And uh, um, all the, the, the little light in the street was giving me all the shadows. So all I saw was like a little monkey, but I saw the eyes because they were pretty big, <laughs> especially when he came close to me. Okay. So, so they yeah. were, how tall were they? Um, why not? I don't know. I'm, I don't know, three feet, yeah. maybe three, four feet. Did they and come to a, you a lot? Oh, they came each time I was punished for years. <clears throat> I stayed until I, I was what, 15 years old, 14 years old. I was in the street. I didn't stay home anymore, was out there. Um, but each time I was punished, which was quite often they used to come and to the point where I was expecting them, but they never came when I was calling them or looking for them. Uh, I was petrified, of course, because it's 
scary. You don't know what you're dele delegating. It's always when I was asleep and I woke up that they were there. But they waited or they put me asleep. I don't know what the hell they did to me. Do, do you believe that they came to check up on you to see that you're okay? I have no answers. I, I can't I can let my imagination run wild, but I want to stay to the fact. I have, I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. The other one, the other experience are a little bit more uh, precise because I was older. Okay. Okay, well, let's get into that. In what year did that, the next uh, experience happen? The next experience, I must have been, uh, I, I mean, remember, it's a long time ago. I was in England. I was learning to play piano at the Royal School of Music. And uh, I left England. I was 22. So every so often, when I had enough money, I was going back home. So let's say I was 23, 20, 23, 24. Um, and I came home to visit my family. And when I came home, I um, everybody was there, but my little sister, Noel, was missing. I was upset because when am I going to see my little sis? She's just, she's just before me. We're very close. Um, and my mom said, why well, she went to work? And I said, but it's Sunday. <laughs> well... And then my sister came back. She was upset. She, she says, I missed the bus. <laughs> I missed the bus. Oh, my gosh. And then I was happy for her. My mom says, oh, don't worry. Louis is going to take you to where you work. And again, remember, no cell phone. I never read a map in my world. The way I was going from A to Z was asking, where is this? Where is that? And stop now and then. Okay, cut the story short. It's 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30. I'm exhausted, falling asleep. My sister is already falling asleep. I'm in the middle of a mountain. There is snow everywhere. I'm driving very cautiously, hoping that I get a cup of coffee and anyone to tell me where the hell I was. So, here you go. I saw a, what you call a bar restaurant <laughs> remember this is the south of france it's not america it is not mcdonald operational 24 hours okay in the middle of the mountain there is a restaurant and it's open okay so that tells you what et can do we can make you see or believe i arrived in front of that thing i walk up my sister i parked i know i parked right by the door okay because it was just enough room to park because the roads are very small for the mountain and I wake my sister up and I said, to her, let's go and get a, get a cup of coffee. And I never, ever forget because it was freezing cold. So when she asked me, when I asked her what she wanted to drink, she wanted to have a Coca-Cola. Don't ask me. So I went inside and uh, I saw three guys at the bar. So I said, sit by the door because I'm very protective, being a French enough Sicilian, my protective of my siblings. And I said, okay, you sit here. I'm going to go and get you Coke. So I went to the bar. And I asked for a Coca-Cola and a cup of coffee. So he gave me the cola. I brought it back to my sister. She was already back asleep. She was tired, poor thing. <clears throat> and I went back and get my cup of coffee. And I was standing next to three guys. But those guys were so humongous. It was so big. I thought in my mind, they must be, you know, logos. They cut the trees all day long. They're bigger than a footballer. In fact, my nose was at their belt. And then what's very interesting and I will never forget is that two of them were looking ahead, but they were motionless. Their face was like frozen. There were no expression, just looking straight ahead. And the one I was talking to was next to me. He turned around and he goes, do you want to play cards? And I was going, uh, you know what? I'm tired. <laughs> I'm here to ask some direction and got my coffee, take my sister to work. I says, no, 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 play cards. You, you got, you got to be a friend with God. I literally didn't know that he was right. <laughs> I became friend with the tarot and each hand is a winner. Okay. So, cause I don't play 21. I don't play poker. I don't know to play cards. I only play tarot cards. So hey, he says, okay, let's play cards. So it was big and my sister was there. So I was very compromised. Okay. Well, let me play a stupid game. Okay. All right. I didn't think that we've got things for that, but in my mind, so I put the cart out of the pack. It was a bigger pack of cart. And he tells me exactly what the cart is as soon as my eyes sees the cart. Okay. Oh, interesting. He said, pick another one, pick another one. 
And it, just before I could open my mind, my eye, in my mouth, as soon as I saw the car, it tells me exactly. I thought, whoa, interesting. So he said, pick another one. So I pick another one, but in my mind, I thought, I am going to change the, uh, the nine of diamond for the queen of spades. Spade. He looked at me and he goes, Louis, <laughs> never told him my name. He says, you're not going to change the nine of diamond for the queen of spades. <laughs> okay, right. And then at the very precise moment, I felt like if somebody put a big, huge freaking nails, screwdriver in my head. Whoa, whoa. So I held on to the bar to keep my balance because I thought I was going to pass out. Okay. And then I look around and I saw the toilet, the bathroom. It was, it was like five feet away. The door was open. I went there and I was like attached to this guy in my head. And I was talking to him in my head. Put some cold water because I didn't want to pass out. I said, who the hell are you? What are you doing to me? I felt so undated. I said, I'm going to come out of here, buddy. You're going to tell me what you're doing to me. And I don't give a damn how big you are. And I meant business. All right, I really did. Didn't take very long. About two or three seconds, put some water and walk out. By the time I walk out, they were gone. Then I look at my little sister. She was still asleep. And I asked the guy, where are they? He says, oh, they just left. Oh, okay. So I, I went outside. I opened the door and I look and I listened. There was nothing. I said to him, who are those guys? He says, I don't know. They must have parked with you. He goes, I don't know where they are. They know. I said, there was no cars. I was the only one right there. So I kept looking, keep listening, nothing. I said to myself, I woke my sister up. I didn't even know if I don't think I paid the guy, really. <laughs> Just look at that. F out of here, I said to my sis. And I remember that night, like if it was yes, five minutes ago, every little detail of what happened to me and my sister that night. We get into the car and we drove, right? That's all I recall. The next thing I know is nine o'clock. Next day, I'm driving home. I'm back in my village. No explanation. I don't know how I made it home because I had to ask direction every few miles. I didn't stop. I, you know, I was entering my little village with my mom's car. I cannot remember where my sister's was. Do not recall if I took her there. I asked a question she, to this day. She said, I don't know. I just remember that I fell asleep and we left. She woke me up and we left. That's all I remember. Now, What's interesting is that I was left with a headache. I mean, a headache that I would never, ever wish on my worst enemy for weeks. My head was like, oh, oh, I, was, oh, I, was gonna, I took every single thing I could take to stop the headache. Didn't work. For weeks, of course, it dissipated with time. So now I can tell you I have a very, very good answer to what happened to me. They did something that they started when I was a kid. They did something with my brain. Why? Why? To these days, I'm so pissed off. Excuse my French. Why did they do that to me? For what purpose? What is the meaning what did they do to me? Again, no answer, but you go for it. I have no answer. But All I know is not imagination. It's very real. Well, look, look what you're doing now. Would you be doing what you're doing now if it weren't for that intervention? But what's interesting is when I came back to London to finish my uh, my music, I was, I was also a recording artist. I got my first deal with a recording company in, in Paris. We sold about 50,000 copies of my first record. We didn't have CDs. We had press record during those days. All, I, all, all that I could uh, never forget is I've lost all my memory. I could not remember my lyrics of every one of my songs that I wrote I could not remember. And to these days, I cannot remember a person's faces after two or three minutes. I cannot remember a person's name 
after two or three minutes, I, I'm absolutely terrible in directions. You tell me you go there, you go there, you go there. That's it. You lost me. Meantime, meantime, I know every single person since I can remember date of birth. Go figure. My friend, we were pretending to speak English. We were about 12, 13 years old. We were walking in the street and I was saying, I, let's, he was saying to me, let's pretend we are we speaking a different language. So we were talking, passing all the peasants, all the people in the village. We were pretending to speak English. I mean, he was born in February. He's now 74 years old. He is blown away when I said to him, hey, you born in February. He said, how the hell? And everybody that came in my life, I ask you once, what month you were born? Like you, July. I would never, ever, ever forget. It's like a curse. But I cannot remember faces, names, telephone number, directions. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Uh, definitely weird. <laughs> Do you think you know, that I, I, I understand why people sometimes have a little bit of a problem to uh, relate to me because I'm coming up with things that are so freaking out of norms. Yeah. But, but you know what? I, I guess I was chosen to do all that stuff. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I would be better if they left me alone and be normal. <laughs> but, sometimes, yeah, we wish it. Yeah. 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 Do you think that bar was actually a bar in no. the middle of nowhere? No, 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 no. Logically, logically, my sister, that, that way she realizes it. How come there was a bar in the middle of the mountain in the south of France? <laughs> it's, I don't know. That, that tells you what they are able to do. They are, it might have been just nothing else than a flying saucer, but they designed it like something that I would go in delegated normally and what the hell my sister was asleep before and after all along and she didn't see nothing not even the three guys she doesn't even nothing at all just stopping she doesn't even remember a coca-cola but she remember asking me for the coke well the whole situation was specifically well especially for you so yeah it's a mixture of uh dramatic unwanted type of experience but at the same time the the legacy the, the blessing that built me back to cherry it's all this extraordinary experience i always say to my students breed incredible people that have incredible wisdom or story to tell i'm totally completely out of the norm and again i was mm. born in february with a lot of planet in aquarius uh, extraterrestrials don't fly in time and space when they feel like they have to use very specific cosmic wind, as I call them, to uh, delegate without this physical dance world. So having so much Aquarius or the planet Uranus, Uranus was the future of technology, UFOs, humanitarianism, the sudden release of energy, extraterrestrials, this, this, this planet in the world of Aquarius is so special. And then you look at the symbol of Aquarius, it's a guy with a jar, right? And I have all my planet in this sign. The, the jar, it, it, the man is me getting into the cosmic code because Aquarius rules the stars, God cosmic design. Get in there, translate the code, okay? Understand the hieroglyph, put it in the jar, and the water that is pouring out of the jar is me giving that wisdom to the world through people like you. That's Aquarius. Make sense? Yeah. This is how this is how you face the world. You, because you, even though that you're born in July, you still are Leo. Now, if you count seven from August, you're going to end up in February. Okay, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, seven. So you face the world as an Aquarius. That's why I'm looking around you. I see planet. I see the world of Aquarius. You're dedicating with UFO. You're dedicating with uh, the world of Aquarius, which is sought by the idiots as cuckoos and by those who are smart geniuses 
right? That's what Aquarius is all about. He's all into the future. The planet itself is very eccentric. It has an orbit, which is very eccentric. So those who have a strong Aquarius are going to have that eccentric text, touch, originality, me. I'm just an example, giving you an example. But you face the world as an Aquarius, and a magnet will attract a piece of wood. Now, born in February, the opposite of February is August. I face the world as a Leo, which means I'm always bringing light. And I'm so honest, and I'm so direct, I'm so who I am, that people have a tendency to mingle my supreme confidence with an ego trip. Go figure. Uh, yeah, because of the Leo ego, Energy. so to speak, yeah. 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 But being a Leo, your soul's purpose as a Leo is to find the light, promote the light, establish the light, and bring a stage. That's your soul's purpose. My soul's purpose as an Aquarius is to go out there, translate the cosmic code, and give it to humanity. And just being objective. This is how I teach. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. You've had an amazing experience with your brother in a vineyard. Oh, <laughs> I love that. that. That one is like you are entirely and completely forced to realize flying saucers, extraterrestrials, or reality. It is not believing anymore. I'm past the word believing. Believe. It's past that. It's fact. All right. <clears throat> I was, again, coming from the UK. I had my first record, my brother owns a discotheque, my brother owns restaurants, ski station, you know, hotels, restaurants, a wealthy mafioso guy. And he says to me, why don't you stay with me and we can play your music in one of my discotheque? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I like to stay with him because he was just a few miles away from the village and he had horses, a big farm. And have fun. Right? So I was uh, with him. And then um, since we leave at night the discotheque is opening around what, 12 11 o'clock 12 o'clock that's when we start life at night so we stay up all night and in the morning we go breakfast we sleep all day and then do it again so that was my routine for a few days when i was with him in, in the south of france <clears throat> and then every single night exactly at 10 o'clock we left the farm we had to travel about one hour okay to reach the highway that would take us to the discotheque, which was about an hour away. So, okay. All right. So that night we were driving and Joe, my brother, was driving a brand new Mercedes. And believe me, these things are very reliable because I used to have a Benz too. We were driving through the vineyard just after 10 and I could see some light coming from the right and then like, you know, moving around. And I was asking my brother, he says, hey, there's people in the vineyard. He says, Louis, it's November, okay? It's November 11. You, you don't forget that, 1981. It says, it's November. Uh, grapes are picked up in September. You know, it's a Scorpio. So straight to the point, another word, shut up. It doesn't talk much. <clears throat> so we were driving and I keep harassing him. I said, Joe, something is not normal. He said, oh, come on, leave me alone. Joe, something is not normal. Look, look at this. And then it happened. The brand new Mercedes <laughs> stole right in the middle of that in the vineyard. Of course, I was looking through the windshield and he was looking up through the windshield and all we could see is light, light. And, the, and he says, what's a helicopter? I says, no, no. Helicopter, I make a flopping sound. That was a humming sound, you know? So I said, I'm going to look. He says, are you crazy? He grabs me. That's why you see the big guy, right? <clears throat> Courageous. So I get away from his grip. I opened the door and I went outside and I was looking up. And I said, what the hell? I couldn't see nothing. I was just blinded by the lights. I saw the song, right? <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, I thought about a minute or so, what the hell is this? The, the light turned off. All the bright light turned off. And all we had is kind of a yellow, goldish, greenish type of light coming down all around me in the car. It took me a while, and then my eyes did adapt to the darkness. And I could see 30 feet above my car, a humongous, humongous flying saucer right there. 
I was buying a car. I was swearing every French bad word I knew. Was, my God, Joe, come on, look at this. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> his mouth was wide open. He could see it too, you know, it took him a while. <clears throat> and then I just, my gosh, this is not a story. This is real, real as I see you and talk to you now. So now you have the proof. The proof that ETs and extraterrestrials are real. That, and it's a very personal experience. I mean, you got to go through it to know. There's no words in English language to explain how I felt. Okay. But it shocked me big time. <laughs> so after a certain time, those guys turn the lights on again. They all we wanted to make sure, you know, we're here, we're real. Okay. And then, they flew like two or three feet above the chimney of a farm on the other side of the road. Now, the area is loaded with electrical power lines. My God, it's so dangerous. And that thing was flying right there through this, like if nothing happened. So I went back inside of the car. The first phrase my brother says is, this did not happen. Don't say a word to nobody. I was, Joe, it's real. He says, don't say nothing. People are going to think we're crazy. Of course, the next day I got a call from my mother because he had a very close connection with my mom, being the first guy, the first kid. And he said, oh, what happened to you last night? <laughs> I said, mom, Joe told you, he said, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's true, it's true. And this sucker, he waited like 30 years, 30 years. And then finally at the dinner table, he says, well, you know what? You guys need to know the fact. You need to know the truth. Louis is not crazy. We actually saw flying saucers. Freaking 30 years later, this sucker told the entire family I was not crazy. But anyway, <laughs> now what happened is when we arrived, usually when we arrive at the discotheque, you know, we have a, the people cleaning, preparing the, the, the bomb and the waitresses, preparing everything. When we arrived, that thing was full and in full action. So, that was the first and last time I saw my brother on the other side of the bar drinking a scotch and smoking a cigarette. That was the first time ever and the last. <laughs> I was on the other side of the bar. We were looking at each other's, we're still in the zone. What the F just happened? <laughs> so where did we go? What happened? I don't know. But the ETs wanted to make sure me and the most skeptical man on the planet. I mean, my brother got a wake up call with a four by four <laughs> that night because he doesn't believe in nothing. No God, no devil, no UFOs. You know, he got his wake up call like hell. <clears throat> and to this day, he is very humble about it when we discuss it. So, um, again, this is, uh, I realized when I came back to England that. There's something going on. I mean, when I was a kid with my sister, now with my brother, I met a guy in a discotheque, and uh, he, he told me, if you ever come to America, I'll be there. I asked him if he could, if he could show me a dollar. i never seen a dollar. He didn't have it, but he had a quarter, which I still have. <laughs> and he gave me his card. And then three months later... <sighs> Thing happened in a way that I was able to find a job in, in Germany where I was a welder because I have a degree in engineering. I was welding, was making tons of money. Next thing you know, I had enough money to one plane ticket, <laughs> two ways, but one way. And I arrived and I left uh, 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 London. I arrived in San Diego. And there I was with my bag, all my music, my suitcase, Walking along the seafront, looking for that address, I finally located it. And I arrived there. There was a couple of old people. And um, I asked them, is John here? Is John who? I don't know. Maybe your son, your grandson. But they were pretty old and retired. Oh, no, John here. I said, is that your address? I saw the card. Yes. I said, we didn't have, I didn't have a cell phone. So could you please call this number? Of course, the number went nowhere. I'm still looking for John. So this is day. How I, yeah. I mean, I've been on radio, I've been on TV, I've been all over the places. No John. <laughs> so guess what happened? 
I was led to the United States. And then came the ultimate experience. Uh, that is too much, even for me. But it's the, it's the truth. I was married to Bridget, and I told her, you know what, honey? I've been dealing with UFOs a long time. And since you're my wife, maybe one day, you know, you get, you know, she was a Taurus, born in May, rational, logical, down to earth, you know. Yeah, whatever. She didn't pay attention. She should. Anyway, one day she was absolutely gorgeous. And she was doing all sorts of a beauty pageant. And then we had a meeting in um, in uh, Anaheim, uh, Catella. I was supposed to go to Catella to the uh, hotel, big hotel, Marriott, whatever, for the pageant. And the night before, I told her, "Well, you need. We need to. You need to get your beauty sleep if you want to compete." Okay, so we went to bed early. In the middle of the night, oh my gosh, she woke me up. I mean, in twelve years of marriage, I never seen her like that. She was crying. She was in the fetal position. She was trembling, having panic attack. Uh, and she made me look everywhere in the house, every cupboard, in the basement, she, uh, under the bed. I said, what's wrong with you? I've never seen you like that. She has never, ever behaved that way. She had a premonition of what was going to happen a few hours later. Anyway, so I said, you know what? The next morning, uh, you look like hell. <laughs> you didn't sleep. I didn't sleep. She said, no, 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 no. I don't want to stay in the house. I want to go. Let's go. All right, nine o'clock. Right. I knew something was weird. So I pay attention to the time. Nine o'clock, my I fill up my tank and I left. Okay. In other words, I was on high five going to uh LA to the north. Okay, on five. And as I was driving, I was trying to turn the radio off and I tried to ask her some question about the night before because I was still in shock. I'd never seen her like that. She said, oh, I don't want to talk about it. I said, no problem. And then we keep driving. And then for some reason, I didn't feel the wheel on, on the road. And I said, what the hell's going on? And then we drove into a cloud and I thought it was the marine layer. In San Diego, you got plenty of marine layers. Um, it was nine o'clock, so it makes sense to me that it could be a marine layer, but I could not recognize where I was. I said, I said to her, Brigitte, I don't know where I am. I don't recognize anything, whatever I could see. And then she goes, look, I didn't see the sign of an IM on LA. You're going to make me like, don't keep driving, keep driving. So I keep driving for like five minutes. The only thing I remember is passing a sign that said uh, Jambore Street. That's the last thing I, I, I recall. And then I said, look, I don't know where I am. I'm going to get out. So I took an exit and, <laughs> and I arrived um, um, on the parking lot. And there was three Mexican guys that were having their sandwiches. And I went there. I said, excuse me, could you tell me where I am? I looked at me like, loco de la cabeza. <laughs> Too much spot. You know, <laughs> I don't smoke, I don't drink, no, no crazy. So I was asking them where I was. And they're telling me that I was at the Los Angeles Zoo. But that is after the city. I said, okay, I'm at the Los Angeles Zoo. Okay, that's just after LA. Okay, I'm going on five. Um, and I said, what time is it? He said, oh, it's nine o'clock. Okay, we left at eight, at nine, at eight, excuse me, at eight. Now, if I have a Ferrari and I drive, a, I don't know, 150 miles per hour and there is no traffic and no cops, I could make it. 90 miles north when I was supposed to exit 25 miles from uh, uh, um, but where I was, uh, gosh, well, I can't remember the city now. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> it took us over two and a half hours just to go back to where we're supposed to be. When we arrived at the hotel, my wife took a shower. Uh, and she uh, she said, honey, look, look. And she, looked, she showed me above the airline, she had a two-inch cat. That was not there before. I mean, for 12 years, I should know every, everything on your partner your body. She didn't have that scar just above the airline. <laughs> what the hell is that? And then she said, I don't know, but I don't want to go back in his house. And she took off. She called a friend and she took off. I was so confused. She was so confused. 
And during those days, I had a good friend of mine um, that knew somebody that was into the UFO fields. And he said, you need to meet these guys. So this guy came the next day and explained everything. I still have the recording <laughs> with the, all the emotions. Okay, And he says, I have two top of the line um, uh, hypnotherapist in uh, can't remember, in California. Um, I set up an appointment with these guys. It's all going to be televised. So please, let's go there. Like two or three days later, I was in Victoria with those two doctors and all the camera and everything else. Anyway, so what happened is, under regression, they sucked the car into the body of the flying saucer. I was, I, I was talking to my wife and telling her, "Don't worry, not the first time I did that. Everything is fine. Everything is going to be okay. It's like I have an agreement of some sort." <clears throat> and then they put me into a little room, and in that room, I could see the Earth that size. Just to tell you how far I was, that size. Okay, and um, I started to get really, really, really hot, and you could see on the tape when they are filming me sweating back it's, it's like a decontamination room that they put me into that room <clears throat> next thing you know i know it's time for me to go inside past that room and i entered the inside of the flying saucer so when i saw the gray they were just you know doing all the stuff they were flying the saucers they were doing all the technology and i was walking by like looking for my wife and i saw her on the screen and they were taking the baby she was pregnant. They were taking the fetus. And I was just looking at it like, okay, no problem. Then I went to another room and then something came down from the ceiling. And it's like a, a helmet, just top above, below my nose right here. And then it's like <laughs> electricity, concrete, fire, ice. I don't know, <laughs> like an implosion. Okay. The next thing I know, I'm driving at 35 miles per hour on high five on those bumps. <laughs> My wife said to me, honey, pick up your speed. Pick up your speed. We're going to be late. <laughs> That's where I exited. So <clears throat> why did they take the fetus of my wife? I have no idea. I, can, I have no answers to that. Do they think um, I have something so highly spiritual that in their logical mind that should be passed on to my child. I know that's not going to be the case. Nostradamus had three sons. None of them had the gift. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, me and my son were totally different. Absolutely. I have a, I have a son. He's born in 1972. Him and I are night and days. I love flying. He's afraid of flying. He is very steady. He's got the same job forever. It's not exactly intellectual. It's totally the opposite of who I am <clears throat> because of his stars. So why would they take the fetus? Are they looking for something in the genes that they think give me that spiritual values of making predictions of young or earthquakes or 9-11? God knows what, bringing the FBI in my house. Uh, wait a minute. So I have no answers. This is up to your imagination. I have no imagination. I mean, I have no explanation. Um, I can speculate. I can speculate at uh, looking in my gene for something that they are interested in. But I'm not the only one who has been abducted, right? Millions of us have been abducted. So they are looking for different things. Um, and I do not think it's the Drakhanis who are only doing the good one, who are doing these things with me. There is also the reptilians. Did they give back the fetus? No, I have no idea what they did with the fetus. It's gone with them in a flying saucer somewhere. Awesome. Oh. I have no idea. And if you ask my wife about this, she says, what? My husband is crazy. Now, I've never been pregnant. I can't get pregnant. They completely erase the memory. Oh. 
uh, she was pregnant. In no way she's going to remember. It's like, like they did with my sister. They put her asleep or something. I don't know. But I know what I saw. And I know what I went through. Now, how do you, how do you, how do you make people realize, even though they know there is big, there is just a very thin hair between divine information and pure imagination, but how do you make people believe something that is so damn freaking personal unless you go through it? You cannot understand me. It's impossible. All you could do is say, yeah, 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 whatever. Okay, that's it. But when you actually the main actor in a situation like that, that is so freaking far-fetched. Um, I still, I don't have any nightmare, but I have some hatred. What the hell? Why don't you let me know? What the hell you want from me? At least let me know. I deserve that. I don't know. But I'm not done. I have a feeling again. I'm not done. I'm 73. I just took my uh, master captain license. I spent a couple of weeks in Alabama at the sea school. I took uh, my 100 ton certification, STWC security, so I can I can take a boat outside of the United States if I wanted to. But I'm I am I am kind of being driven to the Bermuda Triangle. I have no idea why. Tell me, get your captain license and hang around the Bermuda Triangle. I don't tell nobody you're the first show host that I'd say that. So I'm waiting for my license and I'm going to maybe pack up, disappear. I don't know. You, I'll let you, you know. can document everything. Oh. Oh no, definitely. I will always have my uh, my camera with me, and uh, I'm 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 about to go. I'm just waiting for uh, some. I had some medical issues, uh, which is minor. Okay, just wanted to make sure I'm in good shape. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's a story that an experience that will be for the future. I don't know. I just wow. know I'm very, very driven to go to the Bermuda Triangle with my boat. I'm looking forward to hearing the story one day. Oh, well, it's every single thing that I do, everywhere I go, it's either on my Facebook page or it is definitely on my uh, YouTube channel. So I strongly recommend anyone listening to your show, if they want to know about more predictions or whatever's going on, what will happen to me is going to be on my YouTube channel. So just go to drturi.com, scroll down to YouTube, and become a subscriber, and you're going to hear about me. Well, let's let's get into one final prediction before closing. Uh, you talked about uh, having the FBI come to you. Now, that was regarding the uh, the Paris attack prediction, I believe. And in New York. New York. Yeah, I uh, signed email to the FBI in New York and to the FBI in France. I thought, well, they're my country, so I might as well tell them how I feel. And I gave the exact date. And then on that date, you know, things blew up. So anyway, those there's two guys, twice, twice, two guys, four, actually, four FBI agents, but two at the time. They came and visit me and they said, how the hell did you know that on that day everything was going to go berserk out there? So they look at everything in my house. They ask me for all my papers. They checked everything uh, because they thought I was a sleeping cell. And I told them, no, no, I'm losing. I'm looking at the chart. I'm looking at the stars. So I took them in my office and I showed them how to deal with that. They were just looking at this, but they could not connect with me. Their mind was not trained to understand, the again, the cosmic code. And I told them, you know what, there is a wealth of information into astrology, but most of them were raised traditionally, religious, rational, practical. They never got my message. And then after that, in New York, when I did it for New York, again, two other came in asking the same stuff. So I have a big file. 
and the FBI. They are following me. They are reading everything I write. So they probably know of my prediction of Yan uh, in August when I first published it and said, be ready. Be ready. You have been warned. A lot of people are going to die. A lot of mess is coming. Be prepared. And there you go. I can't deny it. It's, it's on YouTube. It's dated. You can read my newsletter. You have a date. It's published. So, well, um, well, you, like as a closing statement, could you tell maybe something about, you know, the state of things, you know, the planet, what's to come? Well, basically, the reptilians are trying to hijack this very rare piece of property we call Earth. I mean, you're talking about a million to one, trillion to one place where the king use us to further their agenda. The Draconis, they created the solar system. Okay, They put us there. They are the gardener of this earth. That's why don't think one day we're going to blow up. The, the, the Draconis would never, ever allow the enemy number one, the reptilians, to mess up their experiment. Okay, so that's that's the good news. But you need to remember the reptilians are cosmic conscious. Okay, they are already in your head. They understand, they know their stars, your stars. And what they're doing is manipulate all those energy to lead you to endorse the darkness, negativity, fear, because they cannot survive. They're like fleas on the dark. They cannot survive without your fears, without negativity, without insecurity, without chaos. And since they are from... Pluto, they hijack that planet, they annex Pluto, planet of death and drama and murder. This energy is now very, very strong since January until August 2023. That's why you see crimes that have never been committed before. This is why you see politicians you know, treating themselves like Aina with no respect for America and no respect for the law. So it's like this world is dying and rebirthing to a very higher vibration. But ultimately, um, when the next dragons, uh, by the way, um, Putan, Putan is a Libra. The tail of the dragon is on the second house and eighth house, and that's the house of money incorporated and endeavors. The tail of the dragon is there. So it is costing billions and trillions of dollars. It's losing a lot of money and all these people. Russia won't be Russia after 2023 the younger generation are going to take him out and he's going to die of a heart attack i already see it all i'm trying to tell you is you don't want to be slaving for the reptilians you don't want to listen to people who tells you there is no hopes we're all going to die that's the order of god that's the bible that's bull that uh, was created by the reptilians that's why they hijack the mind of all these Neptunians out there in the world to create religions every day. It's like NASA discovering a planet or a black hole every day. They have to amuse you. They have to entertain you. But what's the point to waste it to $300 million by letting this little thing crash on, a, on, the, on, a, on the moon or on anywhere for that matter, on the meteorite, okay? When this money could be used for something so vital for humanity. There's millions of people out there that are spending billions, billions and billions of dollars to um, make sure that specific politician gets in power because that politician is going to support you know, the, the peril we are in because it's set by the reptilians, which are greedy. They don't care about the future. They do not want us to succeed, put it this way. And that plutonic energy is so obvious. We all dying and rebirthing to a higher level. We have to rebirth into the eagle. But Scorpio has a stinger. Okay. And then now uh, that energy, which is cursing Russia, Russia is a Scorpio country and Putin, um, at the end, it's not going to be good for him. Uh, Russia won't be Russia, Russia you know today going to be liberated and the royal also are going to be passed sorry of the past i predicted the death of the queen in my 
2022 in Australia's Dragon broadcast. I said, a royal member will die of a disease or by accident. And I was right. I mean, the way I work is so different. It's doing universal. And I'm being kind of negative because I have to use negativity. I mean, if you get a compass, it's pointing out north. Okay, compass point out north, negativity. So I have to go where everybody is in the dirt, in the ground, in negativity, in the reptilian world, in the dirt. And then I have to raise you into the eagle above. And that's what I do when I work with somebody on, uh, on Zoom, for example. The person is not allowed to talk because I have more answers than they have questions. They can still talk their head off once we're, the channeling is over at the end. But they are paying me a lot of money. I mean, sometimes $350, $700. Oh, that's a lot of money for some people. Okay, And I want them to listen to me. I don't want them to listen to them. And at the end, they can listen to themselves if they want to. Once I pass on the message, once the channeling is done with Draco, uh, talk about their soul's purpose, their money potential, the mental process, their domesticity, love, children, creativity, their health, marriage, corporate endeavors, study, traveling, career, wishes, and brain, the power of their subconscious, the dragon's head, the dragon's tail. I, I talk about so many interesting things. And it's only when you face me, like I face the ETs, that you will realize you're doing with some, you're dealing with something special. And I just also produced a couple of days ago a new series of talismans, the entire series of talismans that I used to produce uh, that now has changed. And some people who, if their life depends on it, they cannot date. They, cannot date. they, are, they get no body. They are repellent. The, they are missing the planet Venus in their chart. Venus is love. It's a magnetism. The, the, the seat of attraction between human beings. So that energy is now captivated and put into the talisman for that person who is looking for love. Some people are looking for health. Some looking for UFOs. So I captivate all this energy in a new set. So if you want to know about this, just click on um, my newsletter. There is a picture of the new talisman series and all that I wrote about it. So there's some people that need help. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I am very blessed. I got it all. Emotionally, financially, spiritually, I'm very stable. Um, incredible things are ahead. I know that too. And uh, I'd like to finish by letting you know that I am six feet under the um, uh, city hall of um, Roswell, New Mexico. On the 50th anniversary, they say, Dr. Cherie, we want to have your predictions and we're going to put it in the time. Okay, so I'll be 100 and something when this comes out of the ground. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know a lot of people do not know. Sad enough, um, I have an incredible slideshow. I have my cruise coming up in New Mexico. We're going to take a cruise and I'm going to prove to the people that comes that it is our real i'm gonna give them the proof that i'm the only one in the entire ufology world who can do it and i did it already and believe me i was a shock with these people follow my website drjury.com amazing uh thank you so much for coming on today dr Turi. i'm blessed well Mr. Gray, again, I want to thank you. It's an honor for me to talk to you because you have been a platform to reach a lot of people who need to know what's going on. Until then, my friend, God bless you and God bless your audience. Thank you. Peace. So to those watching, hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, more interviews coming up and I'll see you guys next time. So take care, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Gray and thanks for watching today's episode. If you are an abductee, contactee or experiencer and you believe that your story could help others, please feel free to contact me through my YouTube channel email. When it comes to experiencers, the ET phenomena, and the future, remember, truth will out.